Welcome to the Food Service Clean Invoicing Evaluation Webinar. My name is Georgia Brown, and I will be your moderator for today. And Daryl Wilson will be our subject matter expert from Extend Data. Thanks for joining, everyone. So this is a really quick 30-minute webinar. We want to be respectful of your time because we know we're all super busy these days. So quickly, this is the high-level agenda. First, I will briefly describe who Extend Data is so you understand our background. Then Daryl will go into the five-point delivery invoicing evaluation. I will then review some cost centers and savings potential as it relates to those uh, evaluation points. And Daryl will then discuss four bonus efficiency opportunities, and then we'll go into a question and answer period. We have a significant amount of experience within the food service industry, and here's just some select customers of ours. Now, when we're working within food service, this is Extend Data's area of expertise, specifically around software development and mobile computing. We improve operations by creating efficiency in the truck in the back office, by decreasing those costs as it relates to paper-based processes. And what this does is it increases visibility into the delivery operations. So Daryl, with that in mind, why don't you take us straight into the uh, evaluation? Sounds good. So what we want to do today is walk through uh, five different points in an evaluation uh, that looks at uh, how uh, deliveries are done uh, with, uh, in many different food service organizations. The first point we want to talk about is uh, the idea of paper invoices. If you don't have a system to do electronic proof of delivery, uh, chances are the answer to this question around uh, doing uh, paper-based invoices during a de customer delivery is probably uh, check yes. So based on this, um, you know, if everything is a clean delivery, meaning there's no adjustments, nothing has to change, there's nothing damaged. Um, you know, all is good and right in the world, but uh, in the event that anything has to change, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, regardless of the, the source of that issue, um, that can uh, generate a process writing that takes place on these invoices um, to note any sort of adjustments. So uh, you've got the potential for hard to read handwriting. Um, driver's jobs are to deliver, typically not to have great handwriting, so that can be a challenge. Um, you know, the possibility of a miscount of either product uh, not delivered or added to a delivery uh, is a possibility. And then the back office lack of visibility um, into any of those sort of changes, um, those all create challenges when you're doing um, deliveries based on a paper invoice. Um, one of the things I want to point out on this uh, particular slide is you'll see at the bottom right, there's an area that says resulting cost area. Uh, these are a couple of the um, points for this particular uh, topic. Um, driver paperwork and paper supplies are, are areas where this has additional cost. Um, you'll see that uh, space down there for each one of these um, topics that we go through. Okay. So our next topic uh, comes around uh, adjust invoice adjustment errors. question, do your delivery driver operations frequently have invoice errors due to adjustments? Um, you know, any time that adjustments are occurring, uh, there's always a chance for uh, challenges with uh, some of the things we talked about in the last topic. So this can result in some of these particular points here. Misdelivered product, uh, you know, so that can uh, occur, you know, starting at the picking process, but um, uh, adjust, recording adjustments incorrectly certainly can result in a misdelivered product. If the uh, issue is caught quickly, and a lot of times the driver may go back to the customer and uh, um, you know try to correct that error. That obviously is can be good for customer service, but is uh, not good as far as it relates to performance for the rest of the route, um, well as the driver's time fuel, and so on. 
multiple conversations to understand the invoices. Anytime that uh, you've got you know errors on an invoice, you may end up with the driver talking to the route supervisor or manager, and they've got to talk to customer service and or the accounting folks, and it kind of goes round and round, um, which just burns time, um, which obviously burns uh, resources. So, and then the back office data entry, uh, anytime you're dealing with that and things have to be entered in and then they have to be corrected and so on, that uh, gets time consuming and frustrating. So manual data entry will be our next point to look at. Um, and, you know, the question, do your back office staff manually key adjustments into the ERP or accounting system, uh, if everything is paper-based, the answer to this question is probably yes. Um, and based on that, a variety of challenges, um, you know, can occur. Uh, the, it's a delayed process. So obviously, if you are able to deliver a clean invoice, no adjustments, then you know that that invoice is good. But in the event that there are any sort of adjustments. You've got to wait for that paperwork to come back, and then back office staff has to key in an additional invoice or a, or a credit um, memo or something like that into the system. Again, it's uh, it's work and it's delayed. That can be time consuming as well. Not just waiting for it to come in, but then obviously entering additional transactions into the back office system. Um, and then take into account uh, if any of the data from the drivers is incorrect. Um, obviously, the last thing you want to do is key in an incorrect um, additional invoice or credit, send that off to the customer, and then the customer dispute that. Uh, that's that's very painful. Uh, data errors due to manual entry. This is just simply, you know, fat fingering a, a quantity or uh, values like that. Um, making multiple corrections and then just inaccurate and delayed reporting um, because the, this whole process is delayed and because it's based on manual entry, um, the, the accuracy and the timeliness of performance of your routes as well as sales for the customers uh, uh, can be incorrect. Our next topic is around end-of-day settlement. And really, this is a, a bigger issue for those of you that have uh, many, you know, cash or COD type customers where there's a fair amount of um, payment collected uh, out by the drivers um, and brought back into the system, uh, into the office to be uh, reconciled. So if your drivers perform, uh, you know, paper-based end-of-day settlement or Maybe they perform no end of day settlement. They just kind of count it and go, yeah, I think this is right, hand it off. A um, variety of challenges can come around that. <clears throat> so our first point here is handwritten, hand, yeah, handwritten accounting um, is error prone. So if, if a uh, driver is performing some sort of uh, paper-based settlement trying to account for cash and checks that were, or money orders that were received, then um, you know, there's there's always chance for that to be calculated incorrectly. Uh, because there's um, a, such a manual and paper-based process, the possibility of theft, um, you know, where a driver taking some cash or something like that, um, that can certainly occur. Lack of accountability, um, really visibility of the transactions and what's taking place um, and seeing that in some sort of timely manner creates um, the inability to you know, hold drivers accountable in some cases, or the accountability is late in the process, which then can you know create counting errors or can create uh, customer service challenges. Um, and then you know just a lack of reports, uh, you know any sort of paper-based settlement, um, you know typically. Is, is not going to be translated directly into an electronic format. Obviously, payments would be um, entered into an accounting system, but uh, just kind of creates a challenge in really understanding what's taking place. So, a variety of challenges around uh, end of day settlement. That can also account for uh, you know, various inventory related issues as well. 
Then our last point really kind of focuses on the idea of what we call a perfect delivery ratio. So the question is, is your perfect delivery ratio less than 95%? And the way we might define that is that if 95% or better of your uh, deliveries done by a driver on a route truck are uh, with no adjustments, everything is right, um, there's no disputes, no corrections, um, you know, then an, an electronic proof of delivery system may, may not have quite the value um, that it would for someone with, uh, with less. Um, but I think that in many cases, and again, depending upon the uh, products that you're delivering, types of customers you have, um, a perfect delivery ratio may be way less than 95%. So here are some of the challenges that go along with, with this process. And much of this we've, we've kind of talked about, and this is almost more of a summary, but uh, there's always extra back office labor costs related to um, a, 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 an adjusted delivery. Um, and, and again, we've talked about many of those. More customer disputes to manage. Uh, customer disputes are costly across the board. Um, one, it slows down the process of you getting paid for what you've delivered. Um, it impacts customer service, which potentially um, you know, could result in the loss of that customer. So uh, managing customer disputes is critical. And obviously, the less you have to manage, the, the, the better off everyone is. Uh, lower customer satisfaction kind of ties back into, into this. If every delivery you make to a particular customer has some sort of adjustment, um, you know, depending upon the expectations of that customer, that can really uh, you know, create a lower customer satisfaction rating from that customer. Uh, and then there's the idea of increased delivery shrink. And that's not just losing track of product that's on a truck, um, but any time you've got to uh, you know, deal with product that's coming back um, because it was refused or because there was damage or there was some sort of uh, problem with picking, um, all of this kind of drives to the idea of delivery shrink, which you know, eats directly into uh, margins and uh, profitability for your business. So um, obviously, these are all areas where an electronic proof of delivery system can really add some value um, into your organization. So now I'll hand it off to Georgia to talk a little bit about some of the costs of these uh, points that we've talked through. Thank you, Daryl. So folks, as Daryl mentioned uh, earlier, in the bottom right corner of each one of his slides, there were the cost centers that we highlighted based on each evaluation point. And what we've done is we've grouped those evaluation, uh, you know, those cost centers into these five areas that you see on the screen. And we've created a expense model, or rather a, a um, annual impact model based on our experience with food service companies. And this is uh, based off of a company, a food service company with eight truck routes. So yours may be completely different if you have more or less, or perhaps you do processes just a little bit different. Uh, this is a baseline type com uh, for comparison sake to illustrate to you how paper-based processes affect your delivery operations, right? So what we suggest is that you move away from paper-based processes and you move to an electronic proof of delivery system. By doing that, we believe this is how much you can save. And this is calculated off of our experience helping customers. So. Each one of these areas has a dramatic impact. And if you're better at math than I am, you've probably already figured out that this is 50% saving. Now, you're probably saying, that's ridiculous. That's, that's completely out of line. Uh, we could never achieve that. We've seen when companies are completely committed to going paperless with a proof of delivery system in the cab using a mobile computer, handheld mobile computer for their drivers to interact with, that they can achieve these type of savings. It is possible, but you have to be completely committed. So if you are able to completely go paperless, then you would achieve this. If you can only do a little bit, 
then your your um, savings, your ROI, will vary. However, we believe this is completely possible. On top of that, there are bonus efficiencies. So Daryl talked about the paper-based processes and their expenses. I talked about the ROI related to that clean invoicing and delivery arena. But in addition to that, there are some bonus efficiencies that just come naturally with switching away from paper-based. Daryl, would you mind reviewing those for me? Yeah, no problem. So as we walked through the uh, evaluation points, clearly there were some other um, things that potentially could have uh, been brought up into that process as well. But uh, trying to keep things concise, we wanted to focus in on those. Some other areas where an electronic proof of delivery solution um, can really add some value uh, comes into play with these particular topics here. And again, there are there are additional ones as well, but these are some of the most uh, most important. Inventory tracking being the first one. So with uh, with a solution like that, uh, the inventory that goes onto the truck is tracked from the start of the day. As those deliveries are being made, inventory is being uh, reduced on the truck. So being able to see in real time what remains on the truck, what's potentially been picked up. Um, either for credits or other sort of transactions, those having visibility to that is also possible. And then working into the end of day uh, process for the driver uh, and inventory uh, tracking and, and count accountability piece really helps you maintain and manage what, uh, what products are being um, delivered, which ones are coming back, and so on. Our next point is temperature tracking. Uh, this is becoming more and more of a, a factor with the Food Safety Modernization Act. Um, so one of the things that's, uh, that's capable with a mobile computer and a proof of delivery solution is tracking uh, multiple temperatures that could be captured at the point of arrival at that delivery or even uh, temperatures from the customer's uh, location for a freezer or refrigerated area. So, and tracking those to the specific transaction, um, you know, that particular invoice or credit is what we're talking about. Uh, Real-time route performance visibility. Um, so, you know, many solutions, you know, would claim to provide you with, you know, route performance um, visibility throughout the day. But, you know, in addition to understanding, you know, well, what's the route sequence and when did I arrive and when did I stop, but also seeing uh, what's taking place on that route as it relates to uh, the delivery or the pickup of product or um, other notes and pictures that uh, can come into that as well. And really being able to put all that together so that uh, route managers and transportation uh, teams have that uh, visibility throughout the day uh, and really allow them to make um, uh, quick decisions on, on things that are occurring with their, with their fleet. Then our last point is just accurate and timely reporting. Uh, being able to capture all of your delivery information electronically and have that information um, you know, synchronized back to a server where back office staff you know, have that uh, ability to see what's happening uh, quickly gives you good information. It gives you uh, that information in a, in a quick manner. Um, so again, you have the ability to measure your real-time performance as well as um, historical performance. Thank you, Daryl. Mobile Conductor is a delivery management system that contains a proof of delivery technology within it. Um, this technology, using a handheld mobile computing device, such as this uh, Zebra and Zebra Flash symbol device uh, illustrated here, creates delivery operations efficiency by removing those paper-based processes. Mobile Conductor has won the Food Logistics Top 100 Technology Solution Provider uh, Award for five years in a row. We're very proud of that, and we like to talk about it frequently. And then keep those questions coming. I see three or four. Keep them coming. Uh, what I also want to say is that today's webinar would not have been possible without our hardware partner, Zebra Technologies. 
we'd like to thank them for their support and also highlight the fact that we did a review of their TC55 touch computer. Uh, Mobile Conductor is device agnostic, however, this TC55 has been reviewed and approved for use with Mobile Conductor um, in, internally. So you don't have to worry about uh, this device uh, potentially having issues with our mobile conductor system. We gave it an A, so in the handouts, if you'd like to re read that review of this device, you can click on the link on that particular page in the, in the workbook and it will take you directly to that blog post. So I wanted to thank those of you who were able to attend today. We appreciate it. If you have any questions, please use the uh, information listed on this slide, and we'll be happy to reach out to you. Thank you very much for your time again, and we hope you have a great day.